Hey there folks, Rel here. Today we'll be taking a look at how to turn the flash into a viable assault tool for a single player. We're going to focus specifically on keeping you and your flash alive, opposed to say uh, strapping C4 on it and then sending it into a group of enemies. Because of that we'll be talking about the various weapons and how to use them most effectively. We'll show you the best loadout for you and your flash, and cover the strategies that make the flash an effective weapon from a solo perspective. Let's start first with the most important piece of the puzzle, that's the flash. The loadout we'll be using for most of this video relies on the Wraith cloaking module to be effective. I only have rank 1, but it gives you 20 seconds of cloaking which is extremely generous and more than enough to be effective. If you are not so keen on playing the Infiltrator class, the Turbo is probably the best utility slot alternative, but if you are running Turbo, you'll likely want it at max rank or at a very high rank to be effective, because you're always exposed, so you'll be needing to use the Turbo constantly just to readjust yourself when you start to take damage. The point of either the Wraith or the Turbo is to get you in and out of combat as quickly as possible and to limit how long you're exposed to enemy fire. And this sort of hit and run mentality is unfortunately the only way to fight effectively from the flash. Not just because the vehicle itself is fragile, but because as a gunner you're completely unprotected from enemy fire. So getting back to the loadout, I would recommend using Wraith over Turbos, but Turbos if you're planning on fighting as anything but Infiltrator obviously. For the performance chassis I suggest the Scrapper, this is a pretty obvious choice because it grants you uh, unparalleled control and maneuverability over the flash, and this is extremely important for combat situations as you'll need to compensate for the turret's lack of swivel range, and of course it helps you maneuver the battlefield in pretty much every respect. For the defensive slot, I'm going to suggest composite armor. This can definitely be a personal preference thing, but here is why I think it's the best. Firstly, the flash is fragile, and composite armor will help protect you from weapons fire and explosives, so the AoE of a tank shell or sunderers firing at you with the bulldog or cobalts, rocket pods from ESF, uh, infantry fire of course, and etc etc. More importantly though is that the alternatives just aren't very useful by comparison. My number one cause of death in combat situations is either anti-tank mines or infantry fire. Now the problem is that there is usually more than one anti-tank mine in the same area and mine guard simply is not strong enough to protect you from that sort of damage either way. And the easiest way to keep from dying to anti-tank mines is just to stay off the roads. The nanite repair is a very powerful defensive slot in itself as it repairs a lot of health very quickly. The problem though with nanite repair is that the flash is very fragile without composite armor. Also nanite repair doesn't work if your rig is on fire, so there's a very small damage window where nanite repair is actually going to be useful to you. Most importantly though is that it's usually, usually, burst damage that will kill you or your flash. It's not the stray bullet or the wear and tear that you're going to receive every now and then, it is straight up burst damage. Stealth is useful for hiding your radar signature if you are not using the Wraith Cloak. If you are cloaked, you don't show a radar signature at all either way, so the stealth utility slot may become a little more powerful once sound dampening is added, which is uh, something that the lead vehicle designer Kevin Moyer was talking about during a live stream. but even so, enemies aren't going to easily be able to pick up on your sound and uh, your location during a large fight. So for combat purposes, at least in larger fights with a lot going on, it's just not extremely useful and it won't be even after it receives that sound dampening that was proposed. So overall, composite seems to be the way to go for combat purposes. I mostly view the flash as a high risk versus reward and disposable vehicle, so knowing that you're very likely to die, I want to get the most use out of the flash before that happens, and then I just pull a new flash when it does. And if I'm getting picked apart a little at a time, I can usually find a friendly engineer who's happy to earn the extra repair experience. Unlike a main battle tank or a Sunderer or a Liberator that you're trying to keep alive for a very long time, Flash Riders should have an entirely different mentality. So that's the Flash's loadout, and we'll be talking about weapons on a case-by-case -case basis throughout the video, as they all serve different purposes, and they have different effective ranges and strategies, and there is no one best weapon for combat as a whole. But before we go into that, this is the character loadout we'll be using. We're playing an Infiltrator so that we have access to the Wraith Cloak, but even if you're not playing with an Infiltrator, three basic rules are going to apply. We want a weapon with a quick time to kill over closer distances, so a shotgun, an SMG, or a fast firing rifle. We want medical kits as utility, 
I'm using restoration kits because I don't actually have medkits unlocked on this character, so just ignore that and go for the medkit. And we want a high rank of advanced shield capacitor suit slot. And this is hands down the most important piece of the loadout. The fast firing weapon is so that we can quickly dismount and take care of enemies that are giving us a hard time over close range, because the flash and its limited turret swivel aren't exactly the most nimble thing at times. The med kits are for instantly restoring health, which is extremely important. As a side note, resto kits will not heal you over time when your flash is cloaked, so that's one of the reasons why medkit is superior for this. And the advanced shield capacitor simply keeps us from dying. The most important layer of defense while on the flash is your shield, and the quicker you can engage the shield's recharge, the more often you can stay in the fight and keep yourself from dying. I don't suggest flak armor, because if your vehicle dies, you die regardless, and most of the damage you're going to be taking will be from enemy infantry and not explosives. Nano weave may sound like a viable alternative, but most of the time you'll be taking a shot or two from enemy fire before cloaking and waiting for your shields to recharge. Now, you'll rarely find yourself in a situation where you're trying to escape that very last bullet that nano weave will actually save you from, because usually, like we mentioned before, is if you are going to die, it's going to be from burst damage. So those are the most important aspects of the infantry loadout. I'm also running the defensive cloak over the standard cloak uh, just because the short amount of time that I spend actually off the flash is either to kill someone or to dismount and heal up, and the extra damage mitigation is more helpful than having that longer lasting cloak. This is really a minor issue though, so don't worry about it a whole lot. So again, powerful close range weapon, med kit, and advanced shield capacitor. Now let's really get into the meat of things. The flash is nimble, but fragile, and it has a hard time aiming while on the move. So how do we use the flash to its greatest effect as an assault vehicle? The first weapon we'll be looking at is the new Renegade shotgun. It has a close effective range and a very close one-shot kill range, and it sports a six-round magazine. The best part about this weapon is that it's extremely easy to hip fire due to the damage spread, which is something that it shares with the Fury grenade launcher. The Renegade is going to serve you best when you're already plowing through a group of enemy infantry as it can pick up a kill or two that you normally would not have gotten just by the runover damage. And you'll probably notice a couple of important things in this footage. The first is that the enemy is distracted. This is the most important thing for using not only the Renegade but all flash weaponry. As the distracted enemy focuses on fighting my allies off, I'm able to wheel around and do multiple drive-bys on them. If I uncloak, I'm usually doing it at the very last second so I can just fire off a couple of shots, but you don't want to give the enemy a target unless you're ready to make a kill. If you're going to use a scope on this weapon, night vision or thermal is the best, just given its short effective range, but the weapon is pretty easy to hit fire, so I'd go with the less expensive alternative, which is of course night vision. If you're really really digging the Renegade shotgun, you can also sort into reload speed, and that's going to help you mop up stragglers in situations where you're not worried about running away after firing off a few shots. But reload speed for a low capacity weapon is really not an ideal upgrade, but it's also the only thing the Renegade has access to. And this is really strange, because the Renegade is already at a disadvantage due to that extremely short effective range, meaning as soon as you're out of shots, you have to run away and reload. The Renegade is currently the only flash weapon in the game that does not have access to extended magazines, and this is one of the many reasons why the M40 Fury will outgun the Renegade in most situations. Next up is the M40 Fury, an extremely powerful grenade launcher that can damage both vehicles and infantry. It will one-hit kill infantry if you hit them dead on, or two-hit kill them with splash damage. Like the Renegade, you can also hip fire this weapon pretty easily, but it does take a bit more practice to not damage yourself or your flash with it. You do also have to deal with the projectile's arc, but it doesn't really take a long time to get a handle on things. Unlike the Renegade, the Fury has a much longer effective range. 
It's great for the same hit and run playstyle, but you can also sit at range and just lob grenades from relative safety, like over a hill and behind cover. The Fury is probably the easiest weapon to use for flash combat, as it has the most damage per shot. This means that you are able to minimize your exposure while dealing considerable amounts of damage, and this is how the flash was designed to handle combat situations. For this reason, the Fury is widely regarded as the best weapon for flash combat. Against vehicles, you're still not going to be able to stand toe to toe, but you can still dish out a lot of damage. This comes into play when you're picking at a tank that's smoking and trying to repair behind enemy lines. Generally speaking, the Fury is an anti-infantry weapon first and an anti-vehicle weapon second, as the situations where you'll be able to take on enemy vehicles without getting blown up are much fewer than the situations where you'll just be massacring hordes of enemy troops. If you want to start up the Fury, extended mags is the way to go. The more shots you have in a magazine, the more dead you can make things before you speed off to reload. The Basilisk is the only other weapon that the Flash has access to that can also damage vehicles, and it frustrates me to no end. It can hold its own against enemy infantry, and it technically has the highest time to kill against vehicles, but there is a major drawback to using this weapon, and that drawback is the extreme cone of fire bloom that the weapon has. Because of this massive bloom, bullets will go everywhere if you fire off more than just a couple of shots. And this means that you're practically required to get into close range combat if you want to deal considerable amounts of damage to vehicles or infantry. And this is a huge design flaw. To elaborate a bit, with the Fury, you just empty your clip and then you leave to reload. Minimum exposure time, maximum damage. And this is how the Flash was meant to operate. You attack quickly and then you get out before the enemy has a chance to respond. But for the Basilisk and any machine gun, the length at which you are exposed directly translates to the amount of damage you do. This is the same reason people will use the AV engineer turret over the anti-infantry engineer turret even when dealing with infantry situations. With the AV turret, you can fire off a shot and then leave the turret before the enemy has a chance to respond, meaning less time for the enemy sniper to line up a headshot. But with the anti-infantry turret, you need to be behind the wheel in order to deal damage, meaning you're much more likely to die because of it. So you're essentially forced to use the Basilisk at closer ranges because of that terrible cone of fire, 
meaning that the only legitimate purpose this weapon can have is for chasing down stray vehicles that are already almost dead and retreating for repairs, and this really doesn't offer a whole lot to your team given the risk you're placing yourself in. What it comes down to is that the Basilisk has a design conflict between what the weapon wants to do and what the Flash was meant to do. All that would be needed to make the Basilisk viable is to lower that terrible, terrible cone of fire bloom so that the weapon can be reasonably used from range. Because that is how you compensate for being exposed to the enemy, you fight from greater range. Anyway, that was pretty much a rant, but it's because I hate seeing great potential taking a backseat to poor design choices. But if you do decide to use the Basilisk because you, uh, you like not feeling utterly helpless against vehicles, but you don't like lobbing grenades, then you have to do it from range. Or you have to find vehicles that are already smoking and retreating, and that way you can probably finish them off before they have a chance to retaliate. If you're going to certain to the weapon, I suggest picking up the reload speed over extended mags, because you'll almost always have time to reload before your magazine is empty. And if you fancy a longer range scope on this weapon, it wouldn't be a terrible idea. Now let's take a look at a weapon that got it right in terms of exposure versus damage, and that's the Cobalt. The Cobalt is a light machine gun used purely for anti-infantry, but unlike its big brother, it can be used from great ranges due to its pinpoint accuracy. It functions and even sounds like the engineer's anti-infantry turret, except it's mobile. It has the highest ammo capacity of any flash weapon at 100 rounds, and it deals considerable damage to enemy infantry over great ranges. The downside to this and any machine gun is that it's difficult to use while moving, and that's because every bump you hit is just going to throw your aim off. It's a little bit easier if you're driving toward a target and on Esamir, as there's just uh, there's a lot of flat ground, but unless you have that ideal situation, you're going to need to find a good place to park before dishing out the damage. Generally, you want to stay at extreme ranges when using this weapon, and just like the sniper rifle, the precision is what makes it deadly. You will need to dump a number of shots into a single target to bring them down, but the high rate of fire, accuracy, and ridiculously fast projectile speed makes this easy enough to do as long as you're stationary. Just don't stay in one place for too long. Kill a person or two and then move. Your extreme range doesn't exclude you from taking damage, so always keep the enemy guessing where you are. This kind of goes back to all weapons, but the smartest strategy for flash riders is to attack from the rear. Know where the enemy is looking, and then stay away from their firing lines. If the enemy are laying waste to a base just north of them, then you should be attacking from the south. This is a little less important with weapons like the Fury and the Renegade, but the strategy is still valid. The last weapon I would like to talk about is the Flash itself. The Wraith makes roadkilling unsuspecting enemies a lot of fun, but there are some things you should think about before running folks down. Firstly, if you're constantly running through mobs of enemies, they're going to catch on. Usually this comes in the form of an anti-tank mine, which is going to ruin your day. Uh, there's no real defense to this unless you know where the enemy dropped the mines, so it's just kind of something to think about. Also, max units will not die in one hit from being run over. It will take multiple passes to kill a max unit from collision damage alone. As a side note, max units using the charge ability can actually toss a flash unit. So if you're playing chicken with a max unit who knows where you are and what he's doing, you're likely to lose. And lastly, because of the discrepancies between your client and the server, moving infantry are always going to be slightly ahead of where they appear on your screen. It seems like vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle collisions are handled on the client side of the one who's doing the colliding, which is why Sunderers or Galaxies will explode your Flash or ESF when it doesn't even seem like they're anywhere near you on your screen. But this is the other way around for infantry. If you're an infantry, you'll never be magically run over by nothingness as long as, on your screen, you dodge the enemy vehicle. And it's because of this that you will always want to lead your roadkill targets. 
I'm aware that the terminology might be off because I am not a tech guy, but the premise is still the same. Overall, Combat from the Flash is very risk versus reward oriented. You're meant to get in, kill some things, and then get out before enemies can pick you off of that invisible metal horse. So always keep yourself topped off health-wise, stay far away from enemies who are actually paying attention to you, and just have fun. If this video has been interesting or helpful, please feel free to like, subscribe, and tell your friends about the channel. And if you have any beastly clips of the Battle Flash doing its thing, leave them in the video response below. Thanks very much folks, Rel signing off.